also want to welcome you all to tonight's lecture. Um, tonight we have Nick Zittner, um, and he's a central geologist who will be speaking about um, the, the geology of Kittitas Valley. Um, it's proving to be a very interesting lecture, and it'll talk about the valley's rock layers, folded ridges, ash deposits, recent land formations, and much more. Um, so it's a very interesting topic that I'm really hoping y'all will enjoy. And uh, this is part of our 50th anniversary. Um, we, the Historical Society celebrated 50 last month, and the museum will celebrate 50 in May. So as part of this, we've acknowledged major collections in our museum and are doing lectures based on those. So I'm sure all of you saw the wonderful Rollinger Rock Collection when it came in. So that's what this lecture ties to. Um, and just to tell you a little bit about Nick, he's a senior lecturer and academic advisor for the Department of Geology at Central. He leads the Ellensburg chapter of the Ice Age Flood Institute is a host of the local television show Central Docks and continues to offer a Geology of Washington lecture series at Ross Space, um, just a block away from us. He holds a Master of Science from Idaho State University and a Bachelor of Science from the University of Wisconsin. So now let's give a warm welcome to Nick as he Thank you all very much. Thank you, Sadie, for that introduction. Uh, it's really nice to see so many of you out tonight. Appreciate you coming into town. I know some of you are from out in the hinterland. So um, thanks for making a trip into town and, uh, and joining us tonight. I think the first thing we ought to do is uh, get people comfortable. Um, We've got four empty chairs right up here, and that's very, very close, but we could put some chairs right behind here if some of you wanted to come forward, or if you felt like you wanted to stay there, that's fine. But um, I don't think I can enlarge this image much, so if you're having trouble seeing the screen or something else, let's make this happen. So I'm going to come around like this, and don't be bashful here. If you guys wanted to come forward a little closer, that'd be fine. But what the heck? Let's uh, let's make this space work for everybody. That's this one. I don't, I don't want. I don't want. Space is fun already. Great. Uh, uh, can everybody hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, it's it's really great to be part of this series, and I'm especially excited because I do a lot of outreach to the community, and I see some of you that I do not recognize. And that means that I might be able to uh, get you into our scene a little bit, if you have the interest. Maybe you're here just to be nice to the people at the museum, and you really have no interest in geology, and you're just, you're just looking to kill an hour. But maybe this will be uh, interesting enough to you that you'll want to learn more. And if that is the case, we have evening lectures that we offer to the public. We have field trips occasionally that we offer to the public for free. And uh, I'm also teaching a Geology of Washington class. It's a new class. And I have been opening it up to the public. And uh, this quarter, it's been 2 o'clock in the afternoon, four afternoons a week. And we've got like 40 people from the community who are just sitting in with the central kids, taking their notes, and, and uh, coming when they feel like they want to come. So. Uh, before we quit, I will give you a chance to sign up. I mainly communicate by email, and so if you're an email user, that's the main way that I spread the word about what we're doing, and I'll make sure to get your email address if you have an interest. Uh, but tonight I'd like to present 45 minutes, maybe even a half an hour, depending on the pace, on the geology of Kittitas Valley, and this is a lecture that I delivered last November at Raw Space, this uh, venue a block away. 
And it's just kind of a sampler, I think, of the kinds of geology that we have here in central Washington. And I've learned to not do an hour and a half of lecture and the lights are off and it's diagram after diagram because you all live here, you all have developed some curiosity about things, especially if you've never thought about geology before. And so I'll make sure that there's plenty of time to deal with some question and answer. In other words, that's a, that's a, a big portion of what we'll do tonight is to get a dialogue going about things that you want answers to. And I've, I've been here 20 years, so I've, I've learned enough to, to make it worth your while, hopefully. And I try not to make things up. I try not to have real information. So I think we'll just go ahead. Your name is Rocky? Yes. Thank you. That's, a, that's an excellent name. <laughs> I wish that was my name. Um, is it dangerous to turn off the rest of the lights, or is that just too dark for people? Let's give that a try, and I, I will try to, we'll see how people feel about that. Is that okay for everybody? Nobody's uncomfortable with that? Well, let's go ahead then and, uh, and, and burn through this, um, and I'll keep my eye on the watch to make sure I don't go on forever. So, I'm here on purpose. I'm a, I'm a geology professor, and I, I came to Ellensburg on purpose because this is one of the most exciting places to teach and to learn geology in the world, really, but in North America. And I have friends across the country who trained in geology, and they are jealous of me living in Ellensburg. They know about all of the wonderful things that Washington has to offer geologically. So I don't know why you're here. Maybe your folks were here, and you just this is your home. Maybe you came here to retire. I don't know why you're here, but I'm here because of the geology of the area, and especially the geology of this valley. So if you are unaware of how unique the geology is here in, in central Washington in this valley, then this talk might help you out. Rocky, let's go for it. Well done. Okay, so we all know the valley. We've got that beautiful skyline to the north, and here we are at the Historical Museum, right down here in central Washington. Uh, best city, Ellensburg, Washington. Didn't mean to offend you if you came in from Cleo tonight. Next one. <laughs> so let's start with a quote. This is a historical museum. I found this quote that I really like from a, a, one of the early people into the valley, A.J. Splon, who first saw the valley, I think, crossing Menashtash. So it's first viewing the valley in 1861. And I'm going to read this to you in case you can't read it. Uh, he was 16 at the time, but he's reflecting in this quote later on in his life. This Kittitas Valley, as it looked to me that day in 1861, was the loveliest spot that I had ever seen. As we gazed on that lovely site, I wondered how long it would be before the smoke would be curling from pioneer homes, for here the settler would find a paradise. And it is a paradise for many, many different reasons, not just geologically but I want to give you the geology paradise version of the Kittitas Valley. Next one, please. So this is a view from Steve Moe's place out at Moe Farms, or Hillcrest Farms out on Moe Road. Looking to the north, <coughs> here's the familiar water tower on top of Craig's Hill. And I'm hoping just to get you to see the valley with a new set of eyes. We look at it from a geology point of view. You maybe look at it from an agricultural point of view, or God knows how you view the valley, but geologically, Here's the story. Next one, please. So I'd like to just kind of work through a little outline. I'd first of all, I'd like to just give you a general feeling for the bedrock. We'll start with that. How do the bedrock layers making up central Washington form? Then we will fold the bedrock layers into the ridges and actually form the valley that we have. We'll then fill the valley with a, a bunch of loose rocks that we collectively call the Ellensburg Formation. We'll then finally talk about the surface of the valley with some terraces and some moraines, some glacial activity, some volcanic ash layers. And then finally, there's still, there's still research going on involving some technologies. And this is 2010 because I gave this talk last November. Next one. <laughs> so here's a kind of a very busy diagram, especially from the back. There's no way for you to read it, so let me do my best to let you know what's going on. This is a cross section or a, a diagram about what's under the ground. Uh, created by a guy named Jack Powell. Many of you probably know him. He works at the DNR out by the airport and has spent most of his adult life here in Ellensburg. 
So we're going from Mount Stewart to the city of Ellensburg, and we're looking at the bedrock down below. There's granite of Mount Stewart, which is 93 million years old. There's greenish rock up in the Tianway River Valley that's known as the Ingalls Tectonic Complex, 150 million years old. There's swak formation that's best uh, viewed up at Blewett Pass, a bunch of sandstones and shales that have plant fossils in them, beautiful tropical plants. There's the Tianaway Formation, which is mainly a basalt layer that's up by Verdun, or up at the 970 and 97 intersection on the way to Blewett, and that's the host for the Ellensburg Blue Agate material. There's the Roslyn Formation, that's a little younger, 43 million years. Those are the coal-bearing deposits. And then on top of that, basalt flows that we all know, the lava rock of central Washington. And finally, frosting on the cake, this thing called, this collection of rocks called the Ellensburg Formation. So we're just going to quickly go through this whole set. Next one, please. So have you seen this greenish rock before? Have you driven up the Tianaway? Or, or better yet, uh, uh, hiked up to uh, Ingalls Lake, perhaps, or some places up in the uh, Esmeralda Basin? The greenish rock is, is this 150 million year old serpentinite which actually has a very exotic origin. It's usually formed in ocean <coughs> trenches. Let me repeat that. The rock in the upper Tianaway formed in a deep ocean trench. It doesn't make any sense. The Tianaway has nothing to do with ocean trenches, but yet the rock, we are sure, formed in a deep ocean trench. So there is a long, elaborate story how this greenish rock, which was thousands of feet below sea level, out in an ocean once upon a time, is now at 5,000 feet in Kittitas County. That's not tonight, that's a whole nother story. Again, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to reel you in, in kind of a creepy way. I'm just trying to get you, get you to come closer and come to more of these talks. Next one, please. Don't be bothered, that's just a twisted sense of humor. But here's my son, quite a while ago, walking on orange rock, but the orange rock is actually that green rock I just showed you, the serpentinite that's 150 million years. It weathers or, or corrodes to an orange color. So if you didn't really recognize the green that I showed you, maybe you recognize all these kind of deep oranges that are in the bedrock up in that country. And this is just south of Mount Stewart. Here's the Angles Creek drainage. And then the Mount Stewart area as well. Next one, please. Now get a little younger and you're up into the Tatum now and you're looking at some swalk formation. So next one please, if we look at some of that rock, we've got beautiful plant fossils, big palm fronds and other things that tell us of a time 50 million years ago when the climate was much, much different. It was Florida here. It was Florida, flat and humid and wet. And those, how, how are you going to get plants like that? You need a much different climate. So um, that's another story why we were so different back then and why we're so um, dry today. How's the texting going here? Good. Any, any good comments? Yeah. I teach college students, so I'm a little sensitive. Next one, please. All right. Table Mountain, which is just north of town, right? You've been up there. You can drive up there, for goodness sake. And Lions Rock, that's very different rock yet. That's our much younger basalt, but looking to the north, we're getting to these older rocks, the Mount Stewart granite. Beautiful tamarack about this time. I don't know, is it this good this year? Is it or yellow? Okay, about right now? Working, uh, working on it. A little bit late this year. Next one, please. So again, we look at things differently than everybody else. So most people go up to Lion Rock and enjoy the view. We do that too geologically, but geologically we also have an understanding of each of these rocks and their ages. So the salt 15, serpentinite 150, and the granite 93, all with a story to tell. Next one, please. 